So as artists, the best practice, the best thing to do, of course, would be to actually take our sketchbook and draw on site. The problem with that, of course, is we often don't have time. So like most artists, um, when I travel, I travel with my camera. And the camera becomes the beginning of my compositional rearrangement, arrangement of the landscape elements. Um, I have a photograph in front of me here that is um, the reference photo that I took for the landscape we're going to paint. It was from a morning walk. It was early and the light was dramatically coming in from the east, creating really interesting shadows across this open field and interesting little bits of highlights um, in the shadow areas. So I thought basically it was a pretty good photograph to do a painting from. It did not, however, offer the drama of the deep, deep dark in the shadow areas that I really wanted. Um, and often photographs, and as I travel and teach and as I talk to my students, I let them know that this is about the ratio. Um, so often photographic references will not give you the values necessary to make a good painting. And really, somewhere around 97 or 98 um, out of 100 photographs um, do not offer good, a good value plan as they are. So I have to go to another, in another direction to get the solid composition that I'm after. And that other direction is my sketchbook. So here is my sketchbook that has the value plan for our painting today. Okay, so we've, we've worked our foreground area and we've worked our distant tree line. I'm not entirely happy with this distant tree line, but it's acrylic. This paint, it's been just a few minutes, this paint is dry to the touch. I know that I can repaint any passage at any time. But let's continue with the mid-tones and some of the medium darks and, and continue the shadow areas. So we're going to mix up some cobalt blue again. And you'll notice I'm real um, careful, not, about how I mix and where I'm mixing. Everything sort of comes together here uh, in my palette and I'll just skip around until I find an empty place where I can mix if it's a new mixture or I'll include part of the color that came before and that provides some unity. So this is a little more towards the violet for this area, and we're going to keep violet in this area. And I'm painting violet on the edge. This drops over the hill. And I'll do a little wet blending. This Quinn Rose with white added. Or alizarin, I'm sorry, with white added. And it's right along this edge. I want this edge to be a little lighter in value, a little more towards the violet. And then we'll go back to the blue, blue, green for the majority of the shadow. We need to take that color off our brush. This is still wet. So we'll go back to the blue, blue, green. And as we lay that in, we're going to blend, this is still wet, this is wet blending, the violet right into the blue, blue-green. And this is still blue, blue-violet, because these are blending together. And this has started to go dry already. No big deal. Still blending, still wet blending. If it does start to dry on you, you can scumble to blend. And that's where your brush starts to go dry and you can scumble one color over top of another. And I will often scumble. We have now completed, based on our value plan, all of the midtones, all of the darks. It's time for the light. 
and the light will be dramatic. Remember, remember, we're using practically opposite ends of the value scale, so we're very close to white, but not white, and we're very close to black in here, but not really black, um, but very close. This adds a lot of drama to the painting, and it's time for the lights. This will key the whole painting and allow you to see the full value range. So here's my big glob of white, way up here in the corner. And I'm going to add cad yellow light to that. Not to the whole thing, but to part of it. There's a lot of paint on that brush, but this is very light compared to And some of my strokes describe the contour. You'll notice I go following the contour of this hill. And some of my strokes are up and down, which describe the, uh, the fact that it's a grass field. So I'm, in a sense, since my shadow is already down here, I'm really negatively painting or painting around a uh, previously painted area. And I'll do the sky shape last, and essentially we'll do the same thing there. And you see me turn my brush every now and again. I have a lot of paint built up when I did the mixture, and so I'm twirling my brush as I go, kind of like that, to get that paint off my brush so that I can use it. 